So we always hear N54 is king, the BMW N54 engine is definitely better than the N55, the N55 sucks, the N55 is slow, N55 doesn't make power, yada yada yada, we get the story. Why is the N55 not as power capable as something like a BMW N54 engine? Today I wanted to break that down and sort of give my own analysis as well as what I've been reading from others as to why the N55 isn't as power capable of a BMW engine. Now before we get into that, if you guys can go ahead and smash that thumbs up button as well as subscribe to the channel if you are new here, it really helps to bring awareness to this video as well as spread this type of content to other people that may be interested as well. I would really appreciate that. Let's get right into it. What is the deal with the N55 and why doesn't it make as much power as the N54? So I've broken it down into two basic categories, the first being the turbo setup and the second being the fueling system of the N55 versus the N54. Another thing that I do want to mention, and I know there's a lot of disclaimers that I have to make because when making a video like this, it's kind of a touchy subject since the N5X community is so passionate about their respective engines that they own. Uh, a lot of times it gets heated very quickly when you're discussing these cars, believe it or not. Starting in 2010 with the very first N55 iteration that was produced by BMW, all the way up to about like 2016 with the N55 going into the BMW M2, there was many, many design changes and hardware changes implemented into these different variants of engines and everywhere in between that make them actually quite different from each other. So when you're saying an N55 is slow, you know, you can't just say that, oh, the N55 and the M2 is the same N55 that's in a 2011 335i E90 sedan. There are a large amount of differences. I can make a video about this if you guys want to see that in the comments down below about the different variants and what exactly each variant entails, but they're very different motors uh, from model and generation as well as over time those hardware differences. So I'm going to be talking more about the N55 in a car like this, an M235i, which is a later iteration. It's the car that I own. So we all know that the N55 uses a single twin scroll turbo versus the N54's true dual twin turbo setup. And the twin scroll turbo, I suck at explaining it, so I have this article from BMWN54Tuners.com. Basically, a twin scroll turbocharger is a single turbo where the exhaust housing of the turbocharger is split into two scrolls. Each three cylinders in the same firing cycle feed an individual scroll of the turbocharger, which produces exhaust reversion. Now, essentially, what this does is it mimics the effect of a true twin turbo setup using a single turbo. Now, why would BMW do this? Why would they basically downgrade, in essence, from a twin turbo setup to a single twin scroll? Well, the reason is simply due to heat, due to complexity and cost. So when you're adding two tw turbochargers, you have a lot more exhaust routing, more connections, more sensors, more hardware, of course, that needs to be implemented into the engine. You also have more heat, which really, really can play a big role on the effect of efficiency in the engine itself. So a twin scroll turbo, when used correctly, can actually reduce a lot of those symptoms while still maintaining that twin turbocharger effect on the engine. Now stock for stock, this is great because both engines perform really, really similarly and you really aren't going to feel any difference, but of course, us being BMW enthusiasts, we're going to mod these cars, we want to make them faster, etc, etc. So what happens? Mod for mod, you begin to see that the N54 begins to carry more weight in terms of performance rather than the N55, and that's due to its efficiency with the twin turbo setup. Those twin turbos are basically just able to pack more air into the engine uh, and do it more efficiently when you start running higher boosts and you start adding bolt-on mods, whereas the twin scroll turbo starts to kind of die out a little bit earlier. Not to say that it can't make good power, but again, it's a bit of a struggle with the twin scroll on this car. So, you know, a turbo upgrade is more likely to be required uh, to produce well over 450 horsepower on these N55s. The next thing that I would like to mention is the fueling. And as I stated earlier, the N54 has a very, very complex fuel system, especially for the time that it was released at. Uh, you all obviously have your low pressure fuel system that gets fed into the high pressure fuel pump. You have very, very advanced direct injection technology, so on and so forth. A lot of it gets really complex. I don't even understand a lot of it, to be honest. 
but from what I have read, the M54 just has a stronger fuel system out of the box. Uh, obviously you can run up to like E50 on the stock fuel pump, whereas on something like an EWG M55, the high pressure fuel pump really just isn't sufficient for higher power numbers and low pressure fuel pump, you can only really run E30 to take advantage of those fueling gains. So with a car like the M235i, when it comes to fueling, the low pressure fuel pump actually really isn't the issue. It's actually the high pressure fuel pump and its inability to basically process enough E85 or E85 blends uh, into the engine. Now, with that being said, the M54 has a pretty strong high pressure fuel pump setup paired with their low pressure fuel pump. You can run like E60, the E70 fuel with an upgraded, you know, fuel it pump. On these cars, you really can't do that. You can only run like a maximum of E30, maybe E40 if you really want to start pushing it uh, on the stock fuel system. And in order to run anything higher, you have to upgrade to something like a port injection setup, or you would have to ideally upgrade the high pressure fuel pump. And the only known one on the market at the moment is through a company called XDI that makes an upgraded high pressure fuel pump, but it is very, very expensive. It's like over two grand just to do that. And once you can do that, well, you've sort of solved the fueling issue and you can resume your power gains. You can really start to push five to 600 wheel horsepower on an N55. A lot of people also make the argument that the N55 as an engine isn't strong enough. And that is partially true on earlier iterations of the N55, like in the E9X generation and the pneumatic wastegate models. Yes, the N55 is not as strong as an N54 because the N54 in the earlier years came with a forged crankshaft as well as forged connecting rods. Now, BMW actually solved this issue with the N55, not even that it was an issue, but on cars like the M235i and the M2, the N55 has both a forged crankshaft as well as forged connecting rods. So the engines are still very strong, very power capable. Again, like I was saying, it kind of goes back to the turbo setup as well as fueling. So once you take an N55 and you go with a big boost or pure stage two or speed tech turbo, uh, that's when you can really start to put out some pretty high power numbers. Pure turbos, you're going to be capped, you know, anything past like 500 plus wheel horsepower. Uh, that's kind of the limit of a pure turbo. And for speed tech and big boost, those are the companies you want to go with if you're really looking to push upwards of 600. Now, companies like RK Tunes, they actually dynoed an M235i with a big boost turbo at like 682 wheel horsepower before they started like backing off on boost and fueling and stuff like that. Um, but they said there was potential for more. But when it starts to get at that power level, you really want to start looking at upgrading, you know, some of the internal parts of the engine, as well as just reinforcing everything because you're really starting to push some serious power. And again, both the N54 and the N55 engines are open deck, meaning the cylinder walls don't have any like metal support, uh, which can lead to some strength and durability issues over time. So what's my personal opinion? What do I like more? Well, after owning both a 335i with an N54 and this M235 now with an N55, I gotta say, I personally like the N55 more, especially for my specific application. I'm not someone that's going for crazy high power numbers anyway. So this car makes more than enough power. It's full bolt-on, it's tuned through boot mode. It has an E30 blend flash onto it. Power should be around 400 horsepower at the wheels, something like that. So it's a lot of fun when I drive it consistently. Uh, in addition to that, the reliability aspect of an N55 is significantly better than an N54. So again, those things kind of paired hand in hand, uh, just make the N55 a much more appealing and attractive engine for me personally. But for a lot of enthusiasts, I can understand the appeal for an N54. Obviously, you know, the high power potential is really what that engine has to offer, but everything else, well, the newer engines are really starting to show why they're better. Anyway, that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed everything that I had to say, and please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section down below, because I'd love to hear and have a discussion with you guys as to what your opinions are. Uh, I hope everything made sense, and if you could please smash that thumbs up button as well as subscribe. If you are new here again, that would be fantastic. And I'll catch you guys all in the next one. Have a great day.